What is going on, everybody? It's the Flying Smoke back again for a SmackDown Live review for May, 8, May, August 21st, 2018. We just got done watching SmackDown Live, and SmackDown Live was another re as a big reason why I don't care too much about SummerSlam like you we used to back in the day, because SummerSlam and all these other big pay-per-views like WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, especially SummerSlam and WrestleMania, should be where the blow-off match to a feud happens, and then we move on to a new feud. But lately, we've had more of... We've, we've had more of the feud continuing, and we get rematches from, the pay, from SummerSlam or WrestleMania the next night or two nights later on SmackDown with SmackDown Live now. And we got two of those tonight with the kickoff show... Rematch between Johnny Z and Almas and Zelina Vega versus Rusev and Lana, as well as Daniel, well, not Daniel Bryan, but the New Day and the Bludgeon Brothers in a no disqualification match. And I don't even have to get into what the what was going to happen in the main event because it came out last night that one of the members of the Bludgeon Brothers was actually injured. So. The, you kind of figured that this was going to go one way or another, that a, that they were going to lose the tag team titles. But you had a sing, the, the ma they, they had these matches reversed. It should have been the Bludgeon Brothers and the New Day last Tuesday on SmackDown Live in the singles match, in, the, in, the, in this normal match. That match gets hit with a DQ, and then we move over to SummerSlam, and then we get the no disqualification match. Two nights match was way better than what they did on Sunday. And tonight's match should have been what we saw. Excuse me. Should have been what we saw on Sunday. They do this every single time. You always, they always seem to have like they. It just, it just makes SummerSlam so much less worth watching because you have. You go out there and you see singles match, like matches that that are going to bleed over to Monday or Tuesday, depending on what your brand is. And we're going to see rematches again and again, and that's what happened. It's like, are you serious? I mean, what was the point of having the match on Sunday between the Bludgeon Brothers and the New Day if you were just going to have the title switch tonight? It just, it didn't help anything whatsoever. We do have, and it, I do commend SmackDown because unlike Monday Night Raw, which did not do anything for Hell in a Cell, we do have at least one match set for Hell in a Cell. Am I excited for it? Not so much because it's going to be Daniel Bryan and his wife. It's, it's, the, battle, it's, it's the battle of the husbands and the wives with Maurice and Liz versus Daniel Bryan and Bui Bella. Yay! I think this is a little too early for another Daniel Bryan and Miz match. As I stated on Sunday, I figured we should have Daniel Bryan go away for a while. And obviously this means Daniel Bryan will re-sign his contract, will has be signed with WWE. If not, it will be happening because they're not going to put this match on Hell in a Cell if Daniel Bryan hasn't committed to and he has not signed a new contract. It has not come out that he signed a new contract, but this means this definitely means and confirms that Daniel Bryan is going absolutely nowhere. Now, what contract he signed is unknown. Maybe he signed maybe an extension to get through the Super Showdown. And um, a little bit further after that, maybe to get to Evolution, watch it be like to be there to watch his wife um, wrestle at um, the Evolution pay per view. Who knows? It could be an extent, just a short extension, so they can get through and negotiate later. We don't know. Nothing has been said yet, but this definitely shows that Daniel Bryan has at least signed through Hell in a Cell now. Maybe he's doing a little bit at a time. Who knows? Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. Well, you knew how that was going to go. Jeff Hardy. And Mandy Orton is definitely not done after tonight. This was just a start to this feud. They will definitely have a match at Hell in a Cell. We have Naomi, which I, I forgot Naomi was still a part of WWE. She hasn't been seen in about a month and a half. She took on Peyton West tonight. Does it look, and I want to ask somebody. Naomi has been, is great. She's good at what she does. But Peyton West and Billy Kay, they have been on the main roster since two nights after WrestleMania, which they helped. Carmella cash in her Money in the Bank briefcase. What have they done since then? Nothing. They have been nothing but jobbers to the stars. They've been jobbers to Becky Lynch, to Charlotte, and others. It's just, what is the point of these two? And then, of course, Naomi loses and gives a little bit of momentum, I guess, to 
the Iconics with a with Peyton Royce winning her first match. I think in, since I think Peyton Royce and Billy, like Peyton Royce won her first match since they beat Oscar and Becky Lynch by pinning Becky Lynch right after Os- the week after Oscar joined SmackDown Live. Becky Lynch also had Gay explain to us why she attacked Charlotte and the the verbiage that WWE tried to use to get Becky Lynch to be hated by the fans is just nauseating. I mean, come on, WWE. Do you really think that the fans are going to turn on Becky? Yes, for a second there when she started turning into the fans, they booed her for about a millisecond. As soon as Charlotte Flair came out, the crowd was 100% behind Becky and booed Charlotte Flair and wants Becky Lynch to win this feud. Them trying to turn Becky Lynch as a heel is going to be an absolute failure. It's going to be an absolute failure, and WWE, I don't know what you're trying to do to get Becky Lynch to turn heel, but it's just not going to work. It's not going to work. I don't know what you're trying to do, but it's not going to work. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, he's talking about Armist and then AJ Styles cuts a promo with um, talking about what he did at SummerSlam and how he lost his temper when Samoa Joe tapes him out and definitely just adds fuel to this thing. And Samoa Joe, just on his promos alone, is getting the short end of the stick here. If he does not win the WWE Championship at Hell in a Cell, if, whether it's in Hell in a Cell or not, I think it's a grave injustice to Samoa Joe. And I don't know what that, how, what WWE is going to be able to do to give Samoa Joe that momentum back after the whole Hell in a Cell match is over. If it's in Hell in a Cell, which it should be. This feud is one of the only feuds that warrants an actual Hell in a Cell match. We also got confirmed that next week we're going to have, I guess next week we're going to have a number one contenders match to see who takes on the New Day or the Bludgeon Brothers next. As well as Charlotte Flair will take on Carmella for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship in a one-on-one match in which Carmella gets her rematch finally. Hopefully it's a quick squash and we can just move on and Becky Lynch and Charlotte can continue their feud, which again, WWE is sadly mistaken that they think that that Charlotte is going to be cheered next week when they like, while Becky Lynch gets, and they expect Becky Lynch to get booed. It's just ridiculous. And then we had the main event. With the New Day winning in a, I will say this, Harper, not Harper, Rowan wrestled, I thought with the fact that Harper, Rowan is injured with the torn bicep, that they were going to have some kind of angle where he gets, t- like, in the match, at the beginning of the match, that took him out, and then Harper would be there fighting two-on-one for the majority of this match, but no, 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 this dude... Eric Rowan with a torn bicep, which he's going to be getting surgery later this week, so the Brunson brothers are out of commission. He wrestled a good bit of this match and did not like slow down, at least it didn't feel like it, at all for this match. This guy, I will commend him for dealing and going through a match, a no disqualification match, and doing as much as he could with a torn bicep. You could tell that he had his um, bicep taped up a little bit more. It was, like, covered in, like, that whatever that um, extra tape is. Definitely had it more secured so it wouldn't be, like, you know, torn up and everything. But, man, to the wrestle a 15, 20-minute match with a torn bicep has got to be brutal. Show started off with Miz and Maurice in the, in the arena, in the ring, and Miz... Miz has some words for Dana Bryan when it all breaks down and Brie Bella makes her SmackDown return. It is with heavy heart. And the utmost sadness. Oh, good grief. That I officially announce my retirement. Oh, God. Gotcha, yes. Of ever facing Daniel Bryan again. Oh, thank God. There is a fun start. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, 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 all you want. Coward! Well, it isn't my old coward! I guess 
is she not out here to congratulate me? Coward! Daniel? Daniel, why don't you get that look off your face? Miz, of course, gets, grabs his wife and puts him in front of her, in front of him, so nothing can happen to him. Look, it'll never say coward in the record books. What it will say is... <laughs> You're a coward, Chant. It will not say coward in the record books. What the record books will display is that The Miz defeated Daniel Bryan. That The Miz is superior to Daniel Bryan in every single way. And you are going to have to live with the fact that you will never beat me. You will never be better than me. And you will never have a chance to go up against me ever again. Is for once in your life, shut up. You can come out here and mock my retirement. You can come out here and try to convince everybody that you didn't cheat to win, but that's a lie. It's just another layer in the huge facade that is The Miz. Just like the lights, just like the makeup you wear in the ring right now. And I'm sorry, you're not actually going to be able to retire yet. Daniel, enough. Go home already. Retire again. And honestly, you might as well want to change your name to Daniel Bella. You had to say about it, didn't you? God. Oh my gosh. And Bree's out of here. So Miz sends Bree's pack in, tries to get her out of the ring, so nothing happens between the two ladies, and Bree's not done with him. She just speaks the living snot out of Miz. Get and you know, for us, anyone else, Bree has been by Daniel's side through this whole thing. Daniel and Bree just took out the end couple. The More like Bree did it mostly. Yeah, this is uncalled for again. Marie's just gave birth four months ago. She's the mother of the century. Ah, this could be stressful. Yeah. Bree had a baby too. Don't sweat it. My wife's got a sweet punch, doesn't she? Now, before I was rudely interrupted, um, I actually just talked to General Manager Page. And uh, Hell in a Cell is, you and I are in a match together, but it's not just the two of us. It's going to be a mixed tag match with the two of you! Against the two of us! <sighs> what is you? So we get Miz and Maurice versus Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella at Hell in a Cell. I'm not looking forward to the match just for the simple fact that Maurice was never really that good of a wrestler and neither is, ne neither is Brie. I mean, we just had a, ma a mixed tag match on Sunday where you, with Andrade and Armas. And Zelina Vega versus um, Rusev and Lana. Hopefully they can stick to that blueprint a little bit and just give me most of the action to Miz and Dana Bryan and do like maybe a minute or two of Brie and Maurice. Just leave it at that. I don't really care to see Brie, Bella, or Maurice in the wrestling in the wrestling ring. I mean, last year we had Maurice and Miz versus John Cena and Nikki Bella. So and that match was just god awful. That entire match was god awful. So to see another Bella go up against Maurice and Miz with Daniel Bryan this time is just like, really? Do I have to watch this match? Uh, do not make, do not make Hell in a Cell like Hell, SummerSlam me matches. Is this just how things go in WWE, where every pay per view you get one or two new matches, but everything is, I think everything else is just rematches from the pay per view before. Now, usually it should be SummerSlam, you have a match, that blow, you have the blow-off match or something, and it goes to Hell in a Cell. 
but uh, seriously, I know we're gonna get AJ Styles versus uh, Samoa Joe again. We're gonna get, we're definitely gonna get a Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. The winner of next week's match probably with the blood with the uh, Bar versus the Good Brothers of Anderson Gallows will probably be the one, the winner of that, which will probably be the Bar will take us to Hell in a Cell for the tag team titles, which. I don't mind a, if we get a match like we did between the Bar and the New Day again. If the Bar beat the Good Brothers, which they probably will, if we get another good match like we did between those two teams, when they when those two teams were fighting to see who would face the Bludgeon Brothers, I'm all for it. I'll be fine with that. Just give me a good tag team wrestling match because the last because both tag team title matches on the SummerSlam card for pre-show and non-pre-show were just awful. They just were. They just were like. <sighs> Snooze inducing, seriously. And we move on to Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. Now, of course, earlier in the day, Paige is like, we're going to kick off SmackDown Live with Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. And I'm like, we're going to start off with wrestling? Of course not. Of course not. We have to have a promo package. We have to have some kind of in ring promo. It's just the WWE's formula of go out there and hire a promo, and then we'll kick off with the match. Very rarely in WWE anymore do we ever start off the show with wrestling. It is kind of annoying, especially when you have Paige come out and be like, yeah, we're going to start off with Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton. This match was, the match was really nothing special. It was the ending of the match where Randy Orton, again, I, I, I can't stress this enough. I know I want to vomit. I just ate a couple of hours ago before the show started that I cannot stand to watch him put his finger in, in Jeff Hardy's um, ear gauge loop or the loop in Jeff Hardy's ear and he pulls. Oh my god I just want to throw up. Jeff Hardy like, like drops Randy Orton on his back has his legs up and then just stomps on his balls getting revenge gets a DQ and then Jeff Hardy beats the holy piss the holy piss out of Randy Orton all throughout the ring, ringside area, over to the tech area, beats him up with a chair, puts him on a table, swan taunts him through the table, and that was that. This feud is far from over. Far from over. Let me see here. Then the bar in the back with, uh, I think it was Kayla Braxton, I think, or Renee Young, one of the two, saying she, they want to have, they, they're out here to challenge Whoever wins the tag team titles tonight, when the Good Brothers come in, they act like a bunch of goofballs, and the brother says, you know what, we'll kick your ass next week, and then we'll go on to face whomever the tag team champions are after tonight. Naomi versus Peyton Royce, this match didn't do, go very long, this match was just Peyton Royce winning with a fisherman suplex painting combination, so good to see Peyton Royce actually getting some, but some, you know... Momentum, but you gotta make it more than just once a week. And Naomi's been gone for a while, so do I really care about what happens with Naomi, with um, Peyton Royce and them? Not really at this time. Give me a reason to care. Then we have Becky Lynch come out. And the, she's out here to explain why she attacked Charlotte after their match and listen to how they have her try to explain everything and how they try to get the crowd to boo her and how it just fails and falls on her their face. I deserve to be standing here as the woman's champion. We do not disagree with you, Becky Lynch. We all feel you should be women's champion, so yeah. Listen to the crowd too. Since that moment was stolen from me, Charlotte Flair deserved the beating that I gave her. Because SummerSlam wasn't supposed to be about Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns or AJ Styles or Seth Rollins or Ronda Rousey, and it certainly wasn't supposed to be about Charlotte. Agreed. It was supposed to be about one woman, me. It was supposed to be my time. I had fought my way for months and earned my way into a singles match with Carmella. And I had even gotten over the fact that Charlotte Flair had been added to the match. Because finally... Listen to the crowd. All you hear is I'm chanting, Becky, Becky, Becky. The crowd is behind Becky through this entire thing still. Finally, finally it was 
my opportunity to silence the critics that said that I was just Charlotte's friend. I just want to know what critics she's talking about because everybody, everybody that I've heard, everybody that I've seen have said that you have been underutilized. Even you have like JL saying that she should be women's champion. She should be given a lot more respect than she is. So this entire promo, this is a really weird promo of them trying to force Becky Lynch to be a heel and it's not working. I pictured myself raising that title above my head. You kind of did. But it wasn't yours. I am my own woman. That I am a top star. That I put SmackDown Live Women's Division on the map and that I am the new champion. Come SummerSlam, I had had enough of the opinions and I decided to take action. Because that referee slapping the mat for the third time was like someone counting me out of a trance. I have never anything more clearly in my life. I knew in that moment that my so-called best friend had been holding me back. I knew it's like that nice to figure that out. That Charlotte Flair had stolen my spotlight, my opportunity for the last time. I knew in that moment that I was going to raise her hand up and rip her head off. And of course, they call out the best part where she actually attacks the fans and says, you guys really weren't there for me the whole time. Were you really? Because when the bell rang and Charlotte was named, like, named the winner, you all cheered for a new SmackDown Women's Champion. Well, yeah, everyone cheered that there was a new SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Why? Because everybody hated Carmella. It could have been you, Charlotte, Naomi, Beck, um, uh, Asuka, um, Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, one of those women... Winning the SmackDown Live Women's Champion would have been here, babyface, and the crowd would have popped because the title was off of Carmella. As soon as they realized it was Charlotte, everybody started booing. Everybody was hating Charlotte. Well, Becky's on, like, Charlotte comes in, knocks her down, starts beating on her, and then Becky gets on top of her, and the crowd just erupts, and, and like, like, they want her to beat down Charlotte. On the SmackDown Women's Championship, Charlotte Flair and Becky is trying to destroy one another. And Charlotte was blindsided by one of the most important people in her life on what should have been a, a, a celebratory... Becky tries to leave because, you know, you got to play the coward thing for a second, but Charlotte's like, no, no, no. Get a real friend. Uh, and she's going to take what she believes is hers. And the officials trying to get this, this melee under control with Flair and Lynch have got back inside the ring. Uh, here comes our general manager, Paige, here, trying to restore some order. Let him fight. And now the SmackDown women's division empty from the locker room. And now you got the booing happening because Paige came out and started like waiting to the back and had the rest of the women in the women's division come out to pull a, make this a pull apart brawl, which again WWE loves to do way too much. Paige was trying to establish some order here, but Flair and Lynch cannot be held apart. Oscar, also Oscar, for the first time since Extreme Rules, is actually seen on TV and she's in she's one of the women in this pull apart brawl. Really? Oscar has fallen so far, it's not even funny. Let them fight, Chad. Years of emotion by Charlotte. This is, this is a shame. This is a real shame. This is about supremacy. This is about being the best, Saxton. And that was that. They just fought a little bit more. And that was that. So... After next week, which I can have, I hope we, just give us, just give us a clean victory next week. Have, Char- have Becky come out after the match and beat down Charlotte. Do not have her get involved to cause a DQ. So we get another triple threat match between these, th- between Charlotte, Carmella, and Becky Lynch at Hell in a Cell. I want Carmella out of the title picture after next week. No ifs, ands, buts about it. That is it for, Sh- Carm- it for Carmella. No more title shots. I don't want to see her anywhere near the Women's Championship after next week.
So whatever they do, and you know, you know Becky Lynch is going to make her presence known next week. Hopefully it's after, after we get done with um, Smack, after the Women's Championship match, which will probably be the main event. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. And next up we had Almas and Rusev. Almas and Vega versus Rusev. This is pretty much the same match we saw. I'm sorry, but I know Vega can wrestle, but her and Lana do not have any chemistry whatsoever. These two literally were botch fest all night. I'm pretty sure the next episode of Botchamania will have a good section on just these two in this match. That's how bad these two were. <sighs> we had a promo from Nakamura, who smokes them us to the United, the Nakamerica, the United States of Nakamerica. This is this is just good shinsuke. Nakamura, I'm loving his heel turn. His heel run is just he is good what he does. That's your liberty, say. Give me your time, you fool. Your harder muscle getting to be free. And now that I dispose of. Crown Jeff Hardy and in my championship as Samson, I deserve a country at the American, the Nigeria. Welcome to the United States of American America. <laughs> Oh, good. Like, so, I don't know where they're going with Nakamura now that he beat Jeff Hardy clean as a whistle. Jeff Hardy, of course, is going to be facing Randy Orton the hell in the cell. So, who? And Daniel Bryan is facing The Miz. So, quite honestly, unless they want to go with Rusev, which I doubt. Oh, I got to I gotta also remind Mark that Rusev and, um, Ru- Rusev and Vega, I mean, uh, Rusev and Lana won the match that they had against Vega. And almost because almost went to come back into the ring with a chair out from the timekeeper's area came Aiden English to grab the chair. Moshki kicked and then into the went into the what do you want to say? Into the um, accolade for the tap out. So it was kind of like you saw that coming though. You saw it coming. There was nothing you could say else other than that that was going to happen. That they were going to... But it's like, I figured they would have had, you know, Aiden English again screw screw up and cost them the match, but he didn't this time. So I don't know what they're doing with this whole Rusev, Lana, and Aiden thing. It's eventually going to end up with Rusev and Lana turning on Aiden, but they did take a step back this week and like show that Aiden is there for them and he's not always going to screw up. Then we had AJ Styles out here to address what happened at SummerSlam. What happened at SummerSlam? AJ's a little like trying to contemplate what he could say. Who did Daddy Chance? side of the ramp where you like on the stage so Samoa Joe comes from behind and trips AJ Styles taking him knocking him down pulls him back 
and puts him in the Coquina flat. I don't know what this kid's screaming for, but this, these kids beside the thing are just so annoying. Somebody's got to get out here and get this under. This entire moment was ruined because you had two kids behind you. like, oh, it's a I know it's a Like, shut up, kids. Let this guy attack it. Zach AJ. So we can get the full effect of this. That was, like, annoying the hell out of me during the entire T of this um, segment. So I like this better in the ring anyway. Oh, Wendy! It seems like we're making a lot of promises tonight, including one to come home and tuck in the kids. But guess what? Daddy's already done night night. Give this guy the championship. I, I I don't know what else you can say, but give this guy the championship. This dude, this dude is just one of, if not one of the the best, the best promos in WWE. Give this guy the championship already. Just give it to him. He is worth tired. He is definitely worth it. It. It sucks because we do know that it's like if Samoa Joe is to win the championship, other than like another six or seven matches with AJ Styles, a couple with Daniel Bryan, and Jeff Hardy, there's really no other baby faces. This is why I'm wondering with Shinsuke Nakamura, what are they going to do with Shinsuke now that Jeff Hardy is focused on dealing with Randy Orton, and that feud is definitely not done and over with. So, I don't know where they go here with Shinsuke, but it is a B-level pay-per-view, so maybe Shinsuke doesn't defend the title at Hell in a Cell, and we just wait till Super Showdown, where he'll face off against AJ Styles, not AJ Styles, but um, Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton in a triple threat match. Who knows? But this is definitely, it sucks because Samoa Joe is putting in some of the best work on the mic and the ring for a heel, and it's going to culminate in him probably not winning the WWE Championship, and it sucks. For a guy like Samoa Joe, who is so damn good at what he does, to not get a chance to win the WWE Championship on really. Yes, with the WWE 2K game coming out and AJ Styles being the cover boy, and the fact that somebody in WWE, some people in WWE love the fact that AJ Styles is WWE Champion. He is the guy they send out for promotions, promotional events. They had him and Carmelo go to Australia a couple weeks ago to promote for the Super Showdown, which will be happening at the beginning of October, the first Saturday in October. So, he is definitely a face of the company. AJ Styles, whether people want to say it or not, is the face of SmackDown Live, and one of the faces of WWE as a whole. Not Roman Reigns, not anybody on Raw, AJ Styles is the face of the WWE. And I'm telling you, right now, five years ago, if you would have said that, AJ Styles would be the face of WWE, I would have laughed at you and said, you are crazy. So expect that, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping they make that a Hell in a Cell match, because the person, how personal Samoa Joe has made this with him and AJ Styles is definitely warranted a Hell in a Cell match, plain and simple. Moving on here, we send this, like, we did get the show that versus Carmella will be um, for the women's title next week. They did a little funny whatever segment with um, R-Truth because they can't stop making R-Truth look like a fucking buffoon, even though I know R-Truth or Ron Killings is not that dumb of a guy. But WWE, that's his character. Oh, he's a, he's a buffoon. He's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's saying. Shut up, man. Anyway, we had Kofi and Xavier Woods in this tag team match because Biggie's ribs were had Kinesio tape on because he did take the shot with the mallet on Sunday. So good on them for him selling the injury. He does the um, normal entrance for them and then he just stays behind. So it was K- Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods versus Harper and Rowan. Again, as I mentioned, Her- Rowan has a torn bicep. So the fact that he wrestled like a 20-minute match with a torn bicep is commendable. Okay, as can be. I mean, it, he didn't do too much with the, um, you know, anything that would need to like, do much heavy lifting, but he did wrestle this match a good portion. Harper tossed onto the commentary chair. Like, so basically, at the beginning of this match, you had Harper trying to do something to Kofi, who lands on the um, commentator desk on the outside. 
Xavier Woods runs up and just drop kicks him over the announce table, the commentator's table. Um, Rowan comes over and takes care of Co- um, Xavier Woods, gets Kofi off to the side. Co- Harper grabs one of the commentator's chairs. Kofi's trying to t- charge towards Rowan, and he just tosses, tosses this thing. And I don't think Kofi saw this thing coming. I don't know if he like, expected this to happen, but this looked like if you threw one of those um, chairs that they have, which I wish I had one of those things because those things are nice and comfy. One of those like wheelchairs, like with the three, like um, computer chairs or gamer chairs. If you took one of those and threw that at somebody, he got hit, and it looked like he wasn't expecting that shot, and he just fell like a ton of, like dropped like a ton of bricks. Course of course, later on in the match, we have two chairs. Like Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods brought in a small little ladder to bring in that eventually got used with the the Bludgeon Brothers putting taking two chairs and dropping the ladder in between these two chairs. They go to crucifix bomb Xavier Woods, but Kofi Kingston stops that, and he eats a crucifix power bomb through the onto the ladder for a two count. He kicked out of a crucifix bomb on a ladder stacked on two chairs. I would not want to take that shot. These two teams beat the holy hell out of each other, and it was brutal. Kofi uses like the match comes to an end where you had Harper Rowan. Grab, was given the mallet, he got, like, he, like, Harper slapped him like he usually would, but, but Rowan's like, is that, slap me again, there's a you bad, he got, like, slapped two more times, and he's running and charging to take out Kofi, who's laying by the barricade, Xavier Woods, just in time, pulls him out of the way, and Rowan goes, fa- goes careening into the barricade, into the timekeeper's area, that was it for him for this match, I was like, that's the way to get him out of this match. Harper sets a table up in the ring, goes to power bomb uh, Kofi, um, not Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods. Kofi gets the mallet, takes it and hits and hits Harper in the stomach, in the chest with the mallet. Followed by a trouble in paradise. Puts him on the table. Tight rope elbow drop by Xavier Woods for the one, two, three. The crowd was so hot for this match at the end. It wasn't even funny. You could... They, like, this match, I would say, blew the roof, like, the end of this match blew the roof off of the Barclays Center for the New Day. I'm not a big fan of the New Day. I haven't never been a big, like, a major fan for the New Day. But you could see that the Brooklyn crowd wanted the New Day to win this match. They were just, like, you could just hear the one, two, like, if the referee was, like, if the referee was counting out one, two, three, you couldn't hear anything other than the crowd chanting one, two, three. Three. That's how big this mat. This um, how big this was. So for the fifth time in their career, the New Day. Well, the fifth time in Biggie and Kofi and um, Xavier Woods' career. I'm pretty sure Kofi Kingston is like a seven-time tag team champion, but the New Day on the on a whole is five-time tag team champions. Three for Raw, I believe. I think it's three for Raw, two for SmackDown. I could be totally wrong, but I think it's three for Raw and two for SmackDown. So. Again, next week we should see Carmella lose her rematch so she can go to the back of the line and be in the section of irrelevancy. And then I guess, which it wasn't actually made official, but they challenged him, they challenged him to it. It's going to be the Bar versus the Good Brothers to see who faces the New Day. Probably at Hell in a Cell, probably on the pre-show, which would be sad. But that was SmackDown. The question going in now is, what is going to happen next for Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton, and where does Samoa Joe and AJ Styles go? Both matches, both, and it's sad because both of those, both of those feuds could warrant Hell in a Cell just how they are going with these matches. They both could warrant Hell in a Cell. Which one will we put in there? I hear Jeff Hardy wants to be in Hell in a Cell. He wants to actually wrestle one match in Hell in a Cell before his career is over. So, I could see them maybe doing that. Either way, whichever one doesn't get in put in Hell in a Cell has got to have some kind of stipulation to it. Because Samoa Joe and AJ Styles, you can't just put in a singles match. Because if you put a, Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton just in Hell in a Cell just because that's gotten that personal, then you've got to have some kind of no disqualification, street fight, whatever, between last man standing between Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. And vice versa. You can't just have another Samoa, like if you put AJ Styles and Samoa Joe in Hell in a Cell, you can't just have Andy Orton versus um, Jeff Hardy again 
at Hell in a Cell in a, just a singles match. You've got to have a stipulation on whatever match doesn't go in Hell in a Cell, the other one's got to have some kind of hardcore extreme rules stipulation. Because if not, it's just going to end the same way it did on SummerSlam for AJ Styles and Samoa Joe or Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy tonight. That is your SmackDown Live review. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like this video. Thank you guys to everyone who's watched my videos so far. Make sure to find me on Twitter at TheFrance. Find me at twitch.tv slash TheFrance08. We'll be streaming Fortnite right now with a couple other games probably coming down the line. But until then, my name is TheFrance. I will see you guys tomorrow for NXT's Brooklyn Aftermath. So this will be five days in a row that we'll be watching show matches and stuff from the Barclays Center. Usually there's nothing big on these shows, but they are going to be doing a UK title match between Zach Gibson and Pete Dunne. But with the fact that they already announced what's going to happen later on this week with the UK title, the UK title it's kind of spoils who won that match, even though I'm pretty sure I knew who's going to win that match anyway. And before I go, I don't want to wait until tomorrow, but it has been announced that the first ever NXT UK Women's Champion will be crowned this week at the UK shows. So, whenever that show is coming, and they did tease it at Brooklyn, we will know eventually soon, which will just add another day of content for you guys. If it's, uh, if it's if it comes down to it, it's like NXT and then NXT UK on Wednesday, basically what's going to happen is we'll do an NXT review on Wednesday, and Thursday morning will be NXT UK. I'm not going to do all those shows on the same night. Um, and because possibly what I'm going to do is watch NXT and do my review, and then I'll go watch NXT UK, and then do a review for Thursday morning. So, if that's how it's going to be, it'll be really exciting. The biggest thing also coming out of this is what's going to happen to special events. Are they going to have UK-only takeovers, or are we going to add UK... Are we going to extend takeover to three hours and give us a match or two from the UK division? All of that will be needed to be figured out in time. But again, I'm getting out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow for NXT Aftermath so I can talk about the Zach Gibson Pete Dunn match. And I'm pretty sure there'll be another match too. Until then, my name is Bronx. I'll see you guys tomorrow.